Records. All right, guys, today we're going to be talking about the original Leatherman PST and is it actually still a viable option to EDC in 2022, 20, 23, and essentially on into the future. So I think that it actually is. And today we're going to be talking about why I still EDC this guy and kind of the driving force why I still think it is a really good EDC multi tool. Now, without any further ado, guys, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the Patreon, the Instagram all that fun stuff and now let's talk about the PST now this is like I've said the original PST released back way back in the 90s and uh, this is Leatherman's first real multi-tool that they released outside of you know some maybe like trials or prototypes but this is the first real multi-tool they released and I honestly actually still really like it and really think it is a solid multi-tool and the primary reason why is kind of going back to why I eat see a multi-tool in the first place and essentially whether we're talking about the skeleton tool whether we're talking about the charge that I EDC a lot or the PST itself the primary reason why I EDC a multi-tool is for the pliers and I think that the pliers on the PST are some of my actual favorites primarily because these are the old school pliers as you guys can see here what really sets aside the old school Leatherman pliers are their kind of serrations so on these pliers you'll see that there is a finer uh, bit or finer tooth serration kind of towards the top and then on the actual pliers they're a little bit coarser and of course you have your wire uh, wire cutters there. Now on the modern day Leathermans like the Charge Plus here, they've gone over to essentially making all of those serrations the same. So they're the same kind of set distance all the way down. And while some people do like this newer set and they are a little bit more aggressive, the problem is when you're biting into softer materials with your pliers, these uh, smaller serrations do a lot better at not damaging what you're holding or what you're trying to grab, at least with Thin reason. Obviously, if you're putting enough force down with a steel set of pliers, you're going to do some damage potentially, but these are a lot uh, gentler and a lot um, better in my opinion. And once again, you know, if you're grabbing things like hard metal or steel, the more aggressive plier heads might actually be better. But like I said, these ones are definitely my preference and I definitely like them for that reason. Now, the other thing that I think makes the Leatherman PST a really solid and venerable option for EDC, at least in my opinion, is you do have these really good plier head or really good, uh, you have a really solid, you know, plier head with a really solid needle nose. In fact, there's some of the more fine uh, needle nose, even in comparison to the modern day uh, needle nose pliers by Leatherman. These are still very fine, very needle nose. And that's something that that's the primary draw to them. But the other thing is the size. Now, once again, this does not have any outside accessible tools and the actual tool list for this or the, you know, kind of set of features isn't too comprehensive. You know, certainly it pales in comparison to something like this charge plus but the nice thing is the size difference now these two are actually ironically about the same size in length but much much thinner it's kind of hard to show here properly but you can see it's nearly half the thickness of the charge plus and the primary reason why that is is these outside accessible tools while they are very handy and very nice they do get or make the thickness of the tool much more substantial. Even in comparison to the Skeletool, tool, which is a very slim and trim tool that I think honestly the Skeletool tool is probably the closest thing to the PST in number of functions. The Skeletool tool is still a bit longer and once again is a bit thicker. I'm going to try to show it from the best angle possible, but you can see there it is a little bit thicker. Now it's not too crazy thick because once again this really only has one outside accessible tool and that is your blade but this guy is noticeably thicker and noticeably heavier it's kind of hard to uh, tell in the video but this guy is definitely heavier now on this guy once again it isn't just the pliers you do have a pretty good file I actually do like this file quite a bit you have a nice all 
um, which is probably one of my favorite tools. Actually, it's on this side. Um, and you do have a good blade. I will say the one thing that I dislike about these old school Leatherman um, tools in general is their love for flathead screwdrivers. There are an obscene amount of them. There are three flathead screwdrivers on this multi-tool alone, which is kind of mind boggling. I don't know why you'd need that many, but nonetheless, they're there. But I will say I do like the all. The blade is pretty usable. Now, once again, this isn't an outside accessible blade. So if you do need to use this knife, it's not going to be super user friendly or easy to get to. But on the other hand, it is still totally functional. Like it is a knife. It will cut things just fine. The other thing that I do like is the kind of what you'd call, I guess nowadays, a 3D or full um, modeled uh, Phillips head screwdriver. So you do have that Phillips head for, you know, screwing on things. And once again, it is going to be a fully three-dimensional version. And what I mean by that versus a kind of newer, newer modeled Leatherman is they kind of have these two-dimensional um, Phillips head screwdrivers. So you'll see here, it's very flat, very, uh, you know, like there's not much dimension to it. So it doesn't really have much thickness. Now it still does work for, I would say 90% of the cases and it's completely functional, but it is nice to have that full thickness um, screwdriver in there. So overall, I think the tool set for EDC, you know, it could be better. I would love to see and uh, I'm actually kind of sad that even the PST2 doesn't have a wood saw on it. But as far as it goes, outside of not having a saw, I really think that this is a pretty good setup for wilderness and actually for EDC. If you can get past the fact that that knife draw is going to be a little bit more difficult. The other thing I kind of dislike about it is on these older Leathermans, even some to a degree the newer Leathermans as well. When you draw one tool, it kind of fans them all out. So you kind of have to put those ones back, hold them down and click that blade into place. So it's definitely a very um, intentional move. And so once again, you're not gonna be able to like with this guy, you know, with this uh, skeleton tool, I can easily retrieve and for a matter of fact, put that blade away one handed. It also locks, which is kind of handy. But I will say for this not being a locking tool, what is nice is that um, the way they position this knife on the actual tool, of course, it will hit the frame. So even though this is not a locking tool, there is no risk of you cutting yourself on this knife because it physically cannot bend in on your fingers. And the cool thing is it actually just hits on this little area right here. So you're not damaging your knife blade. Hopefully you guys can see that if it does fold back in. So kind of cool feature. Um, the one thing I kind of dislike about this knife being up on the upper scale is that it does put that distance. Like if you're trying to cut something flat, like, you know, if you're trying to move along a flat object, like say you're trying to open a package and you don't have any ability to angle the blade, you're going to struggle because that blade is physically on the handle above uh, where it's cutting, if that makes any sense. But you guys can see what I mean. So anyways, that's the kind of the big disadvantage of the blade, but it's not too bad. Um, honestly though, like I said, this knife is, or this multi-tool as a whole, is pretty darn lightweight, really compact, and a very pocket-friendly tool to throw in a pocket and just forget about. And uh, that's why I EDC it to this day, even though it is an older multi-tool. The other cool thing about these is a lot of people have this presumption that because this is the OG, um, Leatherman multi-tool that it's going to be crazy expensive and don't get me wrong if you do buy a like really good pristine version of a PST like one of the original um, ones that's in packaging with its sheath they will be expensive like you're talking several hundred dollars probably wouldn't recommend EDCing those ones for collectability sake but this one I got on eBay and it was used as you guys can see here you know it's all scratched up dinged up and uh, it didn't come with a sheath but it is a really good user model and I got this one I think for like 30 something bucks so it, you can find good user uh, kind of models of these on eBay pretty regularly for reasonable prices cheaper than what you'd be able to get something like a Leatherman Bond or a Wave or a Rebar or something like that. You know, you're going to be able to find this for a pretty darn good price on uh, eBay um, if you're looking for a non-collector's item. Once again, the collector's ones that are still in like sealed packaging, those are going to be more expensive and harder to come by. But these user models are definitely easier to come by. And if you have the ability to sharpen a knife or tune it up, you can get, you know, pretty 
pretty hard used items or pretty hard used versions and still tune them up. Not to mention too, some of these PSTs are a little bit newer. Like this one here is, um, this one's a 2003, I believe you guys can see there. They actually made these PSTs for quite some time. So this one is by no means a super new tool, but the cool thing about this one being made in 2003 is that these have a 25 year warranty on them. So even if I did buy this broken, and that's where you kind of, you might wanna ask the seller, because if you buy one that's pretty roughed up and you buy one that's kind of been thrashed on, they might actually, or Leatherman, if you buy it and it's not, more than 25 years old, you can actually send these guys back in and Leatherman will take care of you. So you might actually end up getting a replacement, you know, like replacement bits or, you know, refreshing tools uh, on your PSTs. I wouldn't necessarily bank on that portion. And honestly, if you can tune up the Leatherman yourself, you'll be better off. But that is why I carry a PST, why I like them, and they are still really cool tools. Would definitely recommend picking one up if you're looking for an EDC multi-tool that's just a really well-rounded uh, piece of the kit. So anyways, guys, that is the PST in the 21st century. As always, God bless, and I'm out.